Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know where anybody is. I know where we are. It's uh, coming up on a, a midnight here. Uh, or I'm sorry, about 10 o'clock uh, uh, here, I should say. And um, I know uh, for those of you on the East Coast back in the States, it's about noon. And um, so that's I guess that's all we've got right now. But um, either way, thanks for jumping in with us. We appreciate you joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, – have a bit of fun with this this afternoon. We we have had an amazing day, uh, you know, and, and we keep saying that it's funny. You know, every every day we get on this thing and we start talking about what an amazing time we've had. But uh, today was really really fabulous. Uh, we met with a couple of uh, business owners here locally in Karachi, or businessmen I should say, here in Karachi, and uh, finished off the day with uh, just a, a really really exciting. Uh, we have three hours. We met with the uh, board of directors of the Pakistan office of the Pakistan-Afghanistan Joint Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, for high tea at the uh, Marriott, and just really had a, a wonderful experience with that. That we'll we'll certainly talk a little bit about. They um, they were so generous with their time, Hamad. I mean, you would be very pleased with that, and very open with their dialogue with us, and. Um, Mr. Mata, what a what an orator that man is! I mean, he was amazing. But mm -hmm. I, what I've done every night is in these sessions is um, talk, you know, tell whoever we're talking to that I'm trying to look every day for takeaways that I can take back home and compare to right. the way we do things in the states mm -hmm. and with our chamber clients there. And the thing that was so so obvious to me in this conversation um, that you know, we were sitting there with leaders, and we were sitting there with the leaders of this organization, and the importance of going into a collaboration, and this is an unbelievable challenge, challenge this collaboration, but mm -hmm. the importance of going into a collaboration knowing that not all parties are at the same level of development as you are. And um, being very being very confident in what you bring to the table, but knowing that that there's pride and ownership on the other side, but they might not be at exactly the same level of development as you are. And listening to yeah. these gentlemen, they they just they they approach that whole subject with such. Um, I, I, I told Jay it was like a humble ego. I mean, there's definitely ego there. There's a very powerful <laughs> businessman, right. and they, and they know that. But at the same time, they very humbly wanted us to understand that that other side is working just like they are. They're just at a different level of development, and that you know, in going in, we should understand that that yes, we need to be working together on these things and communicating together, but that we need to give them a little bit of a handicap. And so that was a huge takeaway for me. I, I don't know about you, Jay. What did you? Yeah, no, I agree. And, and you know, it was it was actually kind of exciting for me to watch, or or uh, interesting anyway for me to watch as each of these gentlemen that came in today, uh, they came in in order. And so it it wasn't like we walked in and, and four of them came in together. Each of the four or five guys that were there uh, came in one at a time individually. And so we sat and we met with one who, you know, was very frank and open and had a great discussion with us. And then when the next walked in, he kind of gave way and allowed the next gentleman to speak and, and to have his turn at the at the table. And literally not only just said, you know, let, let him talk, you know, he, he's the membership, let him talk about membership. So great, we went ahead and moved on, but he moved over in his chair and allowed, you know, the, the membership uh, uh committee chair to sit down and actually have a conversation with us face to face and when the next one came in the two moved down and the third sat down in that same chair and and had that position uh, and continued the conversation and the fourth did the same thing this time with the first gentleman sliding around to the other side of the table to join me to give room for the others to stay in their in their spots and finally, Mr. Motowala uh, showed up last, uh, had some uh, previous engagements, and when he came in, everybody stood and moved out of his way to, to make sure that he had the, uh, the captain's chair, uh, if you will, uh, at the head of the table. It was really uh, fascinating to, to see how important it was for each of these gentlemen to pay the proper respects to the, to the ones that came after them and, uh, and, and before them. It was really 
again, something that um, we've lost, I think, a little bit in our culture, but was uh, really, really interesting to, to watch as, as the, just the, the shuffling of people to, to make sure that everybody had their say. And, and um, there was an absolute hierarchy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you caught that, but there was oh, yeah. a definite hierarchy where when one person was speaking, if the other wanted to speak and was of, of you know, kind of a, a, a higher status, the the first man would would stop and, and allow you know for example Mr. Motawalla to, to, to come in and, and say what he had to say it was it was really very um, elegant almost right. it, it was really exciting to watch that but it was really more the content than anything else that I caught that that just you know these are people that are moving and shaking at a, a much 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 higher level than most of us are used to and and you know while we certainly have had experiences dealing with high-level uh, board of directors, and you know, uh, we actually mentioned during our meeting this afternoon the the Quad Cities Chamber of Commerce in uh, Illinois and Iowa, where you know, 2,100 member chamber with uh, you know the the vice president of uh, John Deere Associate, you know, the John Deere Tractors is is on the board. So we we've met with those levels of people. We've had discussions with them, but to sit down and to spend three hours talking to five people, all of whom were that level, all of whom were the captains of industry in in Karachi. And um, Ahmad, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but but certainly certainly Karachi and possibly uh, all throughout Pakistan, these are are very very well renowned, very well known, very influential uh, affluent business folks. And yeah, uh, Linda, for you, yeah. I'm sorry. Is that, are, come on, is that fair to say these are these are folks that are well known throughout Pakistan, not just Karachi? Oh yes, oh, yes right. they are. Yes. Yes. And um, and and just for Linda and Mariah's benefit, uh, uh, Karachi is a, a city of 23,000, uh, 23 million people. It's I mean it's beyond comprehension. And their chamber of commerce, the Karachi Chamber, is a 19,000 member chamber. It's massive. And each one of these men who now sit on the um, on the Pachi, the group that we're working with, these men that sit on the Pakistan side have all led the Karachi Chamber. So they have, um, you know, a great deal of experience not only in the business world and in the um, diplomacy and in the government. Um, that, I mean, Mr. Matawala can pick up the phone and have a conversation with the prime minister. I mean, that's just, you know, standard operation. And um, so to have them have, be, have been leaders of the Karachi chamber and then move into establishing this chamber was brilliant on your part, Hamad, um, and Sipes' part on doing the research and getting the right men to the table to make this happen in the first place. And we had a, a very frank discussion with them about the need to have a uh, a plan of succession because, again, you know, we've got the right people in place, but we handpicked them. So if we handpicked them, there's no more handpicked people to come behind them. We picked the ones that we wanted. So uh, to make sure that there was a, a succession plan in place to make sure that that as they start rolling off the board, that we've got the right people coming in to take their place. And uh, again, uh, Mr. Motawala was very adamant about the fact that they've got this that part of things under control. That uh, you know they, they know exactly how to maintain this. That it's a, a political system here, unlike what we have in the states. So, um, Mariah, you know where you might be uh, comfortable recognizing a, a board of directors that has a, uh, for example, a um, Board development committee that that might be looking at you know who should we be bringing on you know next year as a, a member of the board of directors you know and, and grooming those folks and, and really vetting them and making sure that we've got the right people in place uh, that's not exactly the way this one's <laughs> going to happen uh, you know uh, Mr. Motawala and uh, Mr. AQ and and you know some of the folks that we met today uh, they're going to basically hand pick uh, their folks that are going to come in behind them. But it's going to be done in a, a more democratic manner, where there will be elections and, and things like that. It'll be a wide open process, um, but it will be very much um, uh, pre very predetermined. I right, think is probably right. the way to say it. Right. It was actually kind of funny because you know I I've had to um, and. Hamad, for your benefit, and I'm sure you've talked to other American women from SIPE and, and other organizations that have come into this culture, is that I've had to sort of take one step at a time and determine who 
really was comfortable talking with me and who maybe had some reservations. These, this group was completely open to you know everything I had to say, and so um, when we started talking about the succession, and I put on my board hat, and I and I said, now you know we can't we can't let this go into random selection. You've got to have a plan so that the right people come along in order to keep this organization going. And he assured me in the most <laughs> gentlemanly, <laughs> diplomatic way that that piece of the whole thing they had under control. That's right. And that's pretty much what he said, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, that was it. They, you know, they, they've got a plan. They know what they're doing. It's, it's, Mariah, it's interesting. It's almost like a... Um, I mean, I guess it is. I shouldn't even say almost, Hamad. I, I guess it really is a, a political um, party that they're, you know, if you're not part of their group, you're not, you're not getting in. And, and um, you know, they've, they've won, I think you mentioned, 17 straight elections as a group. You know, this, this, this block, this, this voting block of, of or, or I guess candidate block of, of almost a political party. Um and uh, Mariah, I, 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 Hamad, I'm not sure if you if you can see the the chat that's going on, but Mariah is asking if it's all men. I believe at this point it is all men, and I believe that that's probably uh, going to stay that way for some time. I suspect. Yeah, I, because you see, the nature of this chamber is pretty uh, strange. I would call it. Uh, it's a joint chamber between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Most of the business between these two countries, uh, these businesses are. I mean, unfortunately, though, uh, male-owned businesses, uh, right. because female-owned businesses are relatively small in size in Pakistan, and there is, well, negligible female-owned businesses in Afghanistan side. Uh, but this is a very, uh, uh, basically, uh, young baby. It's only about 18 months old, um, this, this whole initiative. And as time passes, uh, we will see more more members coming in, and hopefully, few few female businesses will also come on board. Uh, according to Pakistani law, I mean, they have to induct at least two uh, female board members. Not now, maybe two years down the line when they have they have uh, female membership. Uh, so that's Pakistani law, which SIP actually got tweaked in 2006. Before that, there was Women were not allowed on uh, on chamber boards, uh, so it's uh, it's evolving. It will take time, and as you said, the the political system. Yes, there is a very strong political system across Pakistan. Uh, there are these groups, uh, so there will be election process. But because groups have uh, tons of boards on their sides, they will the stronger group will win. It, it's, uh, it's a pretty straightforward game. Uh, well, it, it, in this particular chamber. Yes, go yes. ahead. I'm sorry. So in this particular chamber, uh, there is a little bit of difference because uh, they have now opened up for institutional membership, which means that other city chambers and uh, trade associations that are either doing business with Afghanistan or are interested in doing business with Afghanistan or the members are interested in doing business with Afghanistan can become members of this chamber. Uh, so slowly they will also see that their constituency will be huge. It will be across Pakistan. Uh, maybe five years down the line, uh, the elections will be a different scenario, a different ball game altogether. Uh, so we need to wait and see how things uh, things evolve. Uh, but I'm glad that five of them came and met you. Uh, this is uh, this shows that they are giving a lot of importance to this visit. Yes, JMS. And there's there's you know it, it speaks to the um, to the cultural differences you know I mean again for uh, for for everybody listening to this in the U S and in Canada you know um, the idea that the chamber wouldn't automatically have women on the board is is a foreign concept I mean that's just you know uh, where we are and you know the the culture that we live within so uh, you know again we're we're 
you know, for, for those of you who are listening for the first time, you know, we're dealing with a lot of cultural issues and, and you know, so uh, dealing with chambers is interesting in the fact that you're dealing with not one or two people but dozens if not, you know, many, many more people who are, uh, you know, not only board members but volunteers and staff and different ages and different races and all of these different things. Uh, here it's, it's you know, so much more uh, difficult than that because we're dealing with different cultures, we're dealing with different currencies, we're dealing with different languages, we're dealing with different histories and different uh, business know, models. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. The, the Pakistani business model is much, much stricter, much more formal than is the Afghani. So, you know, where the Afghanistan side of things, that you know, they're very, very comfortable dealing in cash. Uh, you know, they'll they'll walk in and hand you cash money and, and expect you to trade product for cash immediately. And, you know, we don't need any contracts. We don't need any, you know, anything but a handshake and a, a you know, exchange of, of cash and away we go. Um, you know, that just doesn't fly in Pakistan. We've got to have everything documented and everything has to be very, uh, you know, rigidly controlled with contracts in place and, and just like it would be in, in, you know, the U.S. or in Canada or any place else. So there, there's a lot of different things at play, uh, not just the, the cultural differences, but, you know, in a lot of respects, political differences and education differences and on and on and on you go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would like to add, I would like to add here if you, if I may. Uh, please. You know this woman on, woman on chamber board stuff, uh, because, you know, I also go across uh, South Asia and also do SIPES uh, Asia Pacific program. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that does not happen. I mean, in the whole of South Asia, you will hardly find women board members, uh, not only right. on chamber board, but also uh, on corporation boards. Uh, what I have seen in the past three, four years that Pakistan has advanced in the region. Now, for instance, we have women chambers. When Saib started working women chambers, uh, there was no law uh, to formalize women chambers. Uh, also, this is this was Saib's idea to to have at least two seats, two women seats on each chamber chamber and association board, just to give women an opportunity to come and prove themselves as you know, a uh, valuable contributor uh, to the vision and mission of uh, these chambers. And that really helped, has helped. Uh, uh, three years down the line, we saw women presidents uh, getting elected on the, on the board and stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, I've seen like, uh, uh, for instance, Cambodia, I was in Cambodia working with a business association there and they don't have a woman board member, although some of the NGOs uh, that are their member are purely women run. Uh, so I think it's it's the whole of Asia and Asia Pacific that is that is evolving slowly, uh, and things are improving day by day. I mean, you see, 51, 52 percent women population, uh, girls are being educated and all that. They are in businesses. They are they are professionals. They ought to come in these positions, you know, uh, all these, uh, you know, men, men driven organization will be history if they don't include women on their boards. So that is the reality of, uh, of this part of the world. Now talking about the US, because I have also done IOM and I've, I've been interacting with US chambers in the US, things are different. I mean, ch these chambers are uh, are run purely on how do you make money and how do you serve your members uh, and how do you survive based on those services and membership. So you may find five or six chambers in large cities, whereas in Pakistan, by law, you can only have one chamber in, it, in every city. So that's a, it's a huge difference and that's one of the reasons Karak Chamber has got 90,000 direct members. If they allow uh, like formation of as many chambers as you want uh, in cities like Karachi, I'm sure people will go for, go and take membership of those chambers that are providing best possible services. Uh, but for the benefit of those who are sitting in US and Canada and listening to this conversation, uh, it's a huge difference. Yes. 
Yeah, and and Mariah just asked a question. She says, um, and I'll just read it verbatim just to make it easy. She says, pardon my ignorance, but I figured that in such a huge city, there would be several well-educated businesswomen and fewer well-educated women in the central and northern parts of the country. Um, you know, I, I think that that certainly makes some sense. Um, Hamad, I mean, do you see that? Is that does that fit the pattern? Well, uh, uh, uh Somewhat, I would call. Uh, in Pakistan, uh, there are corporations that have been run by women, so that's not an issue. Uh, women are uh, in parliament. I think we have got one of the highest ratio in the region for women parliamentarians, and women are pretty well educated. In fact, uh, the previous governor for our, our central bank was a woman. Uh, so, and uh, just to take this example, uh, uh, for Pakistan Afghanistan Chamber of Commerce, uh, they that chamber is run by a woman. I mean, Secretary General is a woman. Uh, so, uh, working woman is something that hap that has been happening in Pakistan. The wo women are coming on very senior positions. Uh, uh, the board members, they're running corporations, running businesses, and all that. Central is also more or less same. So if you pick uh, larger cities such as Karachi, Lahore, Islamabad, you will find scores of women owned businesses. If you go to northern part of Pakistan, uh, uh, still you will find uh, quite a sizable number of very well educated women. I mean, there are three women chambers in northern Pakistan, uh, one in Peshawar, one in Mardan, and there is another one coming up. Uh, so it's not that uh, we don't have senior level women, it's just that they were not given enough opportunities uh, in the past. Right. But in the past 10, 15 years, things have changed tremendously. And in the past five years, there's been a transformation. Uh, so, and as I said, you know, things are much more advanced uh, on this side of the border. That we have uh, a very uh, well serviced banking sector, highly professional uh, financial uh, sector we have in Pakistan, uh, and the culture of dealing with the uh, bank and you know, not dealing in cash is there. And by law, you have really to do that. Uh, whereas the other side of the border, obviously, you know, one has to realize. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, no, I was just gonna say it, it, it really goes back to the cultural differences. You know, at the end of the day, the the you know, the be all end all is that there are plenty of women that could do the work. There are plenty of women that, that have the capacity to do the work. It's just the that culturally culturally they just haven't been given that opportunity. So, you know, at the end, the long, the long answer to the question is no, there are no women on the board today. Yes, there will be soon. We just don't know how many, how soon, or anything along those lines. And I've actually been surprised at how many women we've seen in the workplace because we've visited five sites now, and there have been women in every office that we've gone to. So that, I, I was pleased to see that. And, of course, I'm, you know, coming from a, a, a very limited perspective, but um, today we were on the site, uh, which for mm -hmm. Linda and um, Mariah is their manufacturing, their industrial section. And we visited a business there today, and there were quite a few women in that workplace. Right. And they employ, I want to say, is it Hamad, um, Mirage, like 900 people all together across Pakistan? Does that sound about right? Helix? 900. Uh, I have no idea about that. But it's, Pharmaceutical? It's, uh, it's a... Uh, it's a fast-growing pharmaceutical company that I know. Right, uh, right. But exactly. Uh, so you are right. I think uh, I think the perception uh, plays uh, a pretty lethal role here. I remember uh, my classmate at IOM asking me, uh, a female classmate sitting next to me at the dinner, asking me, Hamad, do you have uh, do you have kids? I said yes. I have two daughters. Do they go to school? So you know, it's it's. In the U.S., the, the perception of Pakistan is as if it's a country of diesel and dust. Nothing happens in this country, but the reality is a little bit different. 
and we should quickly because uh, we haven't had the opportunity yet. We should introduce Mirage. Uh, Mirage is with the local office here of the um, Pakistan Afghanistan Joint Chamber of Commerce. Uh, he's the uh, membership professional working at the chamber where Hamad is the uh, is working with the Center for International Private Enterprise also here in Karachi. So. Uh, Mirage, thanks for uh, jumping in with us. I appreciate you uh, climbing in even after a, a long day work with us. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. I just saw the link and I just jumped into it. Well, we're glad we're <laughs> glad to have you and uh, glad to see you again. So uh, I haven't I haven't changed my shirt yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, we I didn't do much. I just took off the pink one and the and, and went right back to work. So uh, so your wife wasn't too mad for us keeping you out so late, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, this poor girl has been suffering for so, so long, you know, since, uh, you know, they got married when Mehraj has moved to this position, and since then, in the past 18, 19 months, he's been, he's been extremely busy, so I think this poor woman now has realized that this man won't, uh, won't change. That's right. <laughs> well... For, for Mariah's benefit and for Mirage's benefit, since they're both membership professionals, you know, it, it, the, the, the fact is, Mirage, that you are just not alone. You're doing chamber work, and it doesn't matter if you're in North Quabbin, where uh, Mariah is in the New England area, or if you're in uh, Karachi, Pakistan. It's still chamber work, and you're still going to be, you know, sitting around a table with some board members at eight o'clock at night while the family's sitting at home waiting for you to come home. <laughs> well, and, and worse than that, I will tell you this, Maud. You better make sure you get to the office as, as quickly as you possibly can tomorrow. I'm, I understand that we've got a um, a phenomenal uh, breakfast surprise. We're, we're not being told what it is. We don't know what's going on. We just know that we've got some some secret <laughs> breakfast plans going on at the uh, at the chamber office. And I think that uh, Mirage's wife is involved in the plans, although I don't know exactly yeah, how yeah, that's all. She, she's in kitchen. I just, she's in kitchen. <laughs> I just gave, gave her the ingredients. <laughs> ah, there we go. Oh, that's great. So there you go. Amon, I don't know what we've got in store, but uh, we, we've already so we've already put Mirage's wife to work for the chamber. <laughs> and that happens, and you, too. You are, yeah, yeah, and you two are so lucky, you know. Uh, and we are lucky as Saif to have uh, such a wonderful team at Party Pakistan with Mirage Faiza and uh, the other two also. Uh, you know, at times we fight, we do all sorts of silly things over emails and phones and when we meet. But uh, we are extremely, you know, good friends also. And that is one of the key success of this side uh, of the chamber that, you know, we work so closely on things and we try to sort things out as soon as possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, we are uh, just, again, so thrilled and, and excited to be working with uh, with SIPE and, and with the, uh, the, the PACHI, the, the Pakistan-Afghanistan Joint Chamber. It's been a, a, an unbelievable... I mean, this, this week has gone by so quickly. I mean, to think that you know, tomorrow is our last real day here. I mean, we, we leave on Saturday. Uh, we'll fly out of here uh, very, very early in the morning and really early. I mean, like, we're not going to sleep tomorrow night probably early. Uh, we're going to fly from Kabul, or from here, I should say, from Karachi through Dubai to Kabul, which ends up being about an eight-hour travel day. Uh, we still haven't quite figured out why they don't fly directly from Karachi to Kabul, but... Uh, Mirage, I'm sure you'll uh, you'll be able to fill us in on the uh, on the details of that tomorrow. But for whatever reason, uh, instead of going straight from Karachi to Kabul, which is about a two-hour flight, we're doing an eight-hour Karachi to Kabul to or, I'm sorry, Karachi to Dubai to Kabul, and then we'll start this whole process over again with a week in Kabul, meeting with the staff there and meeting with the. Uh, 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 members and the board, and really just getting a, a good feel for what's going on before we start to formulate our plan for uh, the return trip to Dubai back in uh, in January. Yep, and and the board um, the board members were interested in in being in Dubai, so we were excited to hear that. Linda, were you trying mm -hmm. to ask a question? Yeah. Well, no, I'd like to make two comments if I might. Um, sure. Wonderful to see you guys, um, and wonderful to hear your progress from the conversation. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm sorry for the gentleman who's who joined us later. I'm Jay's mother. Hi, mom. Uh, hi, honey. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, 
two things, two things that I'd like to, to add. Um, you're talking about women. I think, Mariah, you brought up the question, women in the workforce. And I think the fact that you've got women in the workforce working their way up um, in Pakistan is, is a marvelous thing considering the cultural considering the cultural um, issues that they have to deal with because we in the United States are still fighting that battle um, in some areas for you know women to get through the glass ceiling to be in certain industries and the fact that they've already made some headway with the cultural boundaries that they have to deal with is really it, it's fabulous it's just absolutely fabulous the other thought that I had Annette as you were explaining um, the five gentlemen for, for my benefit who you met with, I think that was today, it might have been yesterday, I'm not sure. The fact that you've got such tremendous support for the chamber in Pakistan at that high level. I, I've been in business, gentlemen, and Mariah, for 23 years. I was with the Campbell Soup Company. And I know that you cannot do anything as large as what you're trying to do without complete buy-in from, from the top, from senior management. And it sounds like you have such a wonderful basis for success based on the gentlemen that Annette and Jay met with. Um, I, I just uh, I couldn't be more happy for you or more um, confident in the success going forward. So I wish you the very best. Thank you guys for letting me um, listen in. I hope to do that during next week as well. But uh, Great. Thank there's you. fantastic things going on. Thanks for joining us. And I, you know, I want to add in FISA, who is the what we would Girls, um, or Linda and Mariah, what we would call in the states of uh, executive director or CEO, president of a chamber. Uh, FISA is we're breaking ground with that here. She is the first. Am I right about that, Mirage Hamad? She's the first woman to be the president level of an organization of a chamber in Pakistan. Isn't that correct? Uh, well, she's uh, the second actually. Uh, the first one is Jahan Ahra. She's the uh, president for Pakistan Software Houses Association, which is an all Pakistan based association. So for Chamber, yes, she is the first one, but if right. you take business associations as one big community, she's the second. She's the second. Uh, plus, uh, if there are some uh, women working previously as a secretary, I'm not sure, but at least Faida got all the delegation of power. He has much more delegation of power, plus the intervention of the board of directors are very, very limited. This is what the Zubair Mutiwala said in today's like high tea. Right. Well, and and let me go back to uh, to my mother's point. <laughs> so weird, um, you know, when you when you think about <laughs> stop it, you can make me laugh. Um, when you think about where just in the United States where we've come on a women in the workplace front, you know, I remember a time not that long ago, well, okay, it was a long time ago, but um, for my mother's sake, I'll say not that long ago when, you know, she entered the workforce and there weren't a lot of women in leadership roles. There weren't, you know, I mean, you know. Uh, you, you, certainly, in the in the you know late seventies and, and early eighties, women were in the workforce. That's not the question, but they certainly didn't attain the level of success that you know even somebody like my mother had in her career with the Campbell's uh, uh, Corporation, and and you know without a degree, being able to go as far as as she did, uh, you know to the you know. Uh, Basically, the you know the senior corporate credit manager for the entire company, it you know completely unheard of. And now there are vice presidents and presidents and senior vice presidents, you know, sitting in those suites that happen to be women. So you know when you think about, it, I mean, that's a you know a, a thirty year you know thirty five year window that we've come you know just in the United States a very very long way. So there's a lot of room for growth, obviously, in South Asia. Um, and certainly here in Pakistan, and I know obviously in Afghanistan, there there will be the same situation. Probably uh, uh, you know some uh, some room to go there as well. But to see the the distance that uh, you know a professional woman like my mother was able to come in just that 35 year span, it gives me a lot of hope for the fact that this organization is moving forward, doing the right things, making the right things happen, and really showcasing what women can do in, in the chamber space with FISA as a tremendous leader at, at that level as well. So big things happening and, and uh, I, I think probably directly. Yep. 
Thanks. All right. So uh, I would like to back leave now because I have to get up early in the morning for the <laughs> meeting. And I see you at the at the, at the chamber. It's around. Uh, well, as soon as I'm done with the meeting, I'll just. Thanks for dropping in, Hamad. Hamad, get there as early as you can. I cannot. <laughs> Hamad, I can't promise you there's going to be any breakfast for you if you don't get there early. <laughs> Uh, Something, I won't so, eat because I know what to do. It will be too much of calories, so I will. <laughs> this is exactly the same. This is exactly the same answer which Zafar said. Amal Sab is very much about the diet, so he might not take this much happiness after seeing the what we are offering tomorrow for the breakfast. <laughs> there is a leftover. Then I'll probably take a bite or so, but. Enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> Thanks again, Ahmad. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, sure. Okay. Bye bye. Guys, we'll leave the rest of this open for a few more minutes. If anybody has any uh, any questions or or comments or wants to jump in, we've got plenty of time. I think everyone Hearing. love 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 listening you guys. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks so much, Mirage. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you jumping in and. Uh, we look forward to seeing you and uh, and eating your wife's cooking in the morning. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what, Mar uh, Mariah does have a question. She says, are there ways in which the U.S. can support this effort? Yeah, we're getting some feedback there. I think it might be Hamad coming in. I'm not sure. Hang on one second. Let's try this. All right, let's try that again. So, um, Mirage, I'm gonna I'm gonna open that one up to you and see if you have any thoughts on that. Um, the question again was, you know, are there any ways in which the U.S. can support the the Apache effort? Uh, like the first thing you people are doing, like giving us a training. That's one of the like, which ultimately give a boost. Definitely, we'll get some fresh experience from you people. And secondly, like. Uh, we can do some joint small workshops. We can not or not uh, like practically. We can have any virtual sessions because the with the internet and the video conferencing facilities are really good in Karachi. So once you go back, we can you can like uh, gather four and five uh, women from different chamber working over there. Here, Faiza and some other women who are working in different chambers or any business organization, they can join and we can have a good church, church sessions or, or a video con. So we can learn from each other experience. Now, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. I think that's certainly um, you know something that, that we can do here. Um, Mariah said she couldn't hear you for some reason. So just um, recapping, basically, uh, Mariah, what, what Mirage was talking about was, uh, you know, First of all, the the, the effort that, that they're getting now, uh, and again, that's that's you know with Net and I coming over, but that's uh, because frankly of the the British government that, that made that happen. It's the um, okay, she can't hear me either now. So yeah, go ahead and drop and come back. Well, okay, she can't hear me, so let me just type to her in case she's. Oh, never mind. She's gonna she's gonna um, Mirage. She's gonna drop out and try and come back sure. in and see if she can hear sure. us again. So we'll give her a second to, to try and jump back in, but um, the fact that the technology supports us this well is really amazing. Yeah. <laughs> did we uh, did we tell you what happened on the first one we did? <laughs> no. So, what happened? So we had all the you, you saw all the pictures that we posted from that first day with the with the beach and the camel and and yes. you know uh, Mohata Palace and and everything else that we did. Mm -hmm. So we tried our very first session on uh, on the hangout, and as okay. we're talking, uh, you know, we had a great great discussion. Um, you know, probably twenty minutes give or take, and um, you know, some friends of ours that are are you know pretty well known in the chamber joined us, and we we're having a great conversation. And all of a sudden, we went to switch over to uh, screenshot, you know, so I can or screen share, so I could uh, show the pictures and we could talk about what we saw and what we did. And we just, I mean, we went through forty pictures, 
describing you know each one and what we saw and what we thought about them and, and, and why we took them and everything else. It was great narrative. It was awesome. We had, we had a fantastic time, only to find out that we had lost the internet um, after the very first picture. And so we spent 39 pictures talking to ourselves, telling ourselves what a great time we had and all about these pictures. And we came back, you know, and when we got out of the screen share, all of a sudden there we are, you know, it's like, you know, the, the video cut off at like 27 minutes and we were talking for 48. So. <laughs> oh, it's a real shame, too, because it was great. It but, was. But, the, it was really, really but this good. thing happened, this thing happened only on the first day? Just the first day, yeah. So we haven't tried, we haven't tried the, uh, you, we haven't but tried be, be ready. Test. But get ready, you might be having the same thing in Afghanistan several times. <laughs> yeah, well, the you know, internet we've facility had, is not that good. Yeah. Well, we've had, um, we've had some black, well, blackouts, that's not fair. We've had some um, power outages, you know, uh, here in the hotel okay. a couple of times. Um, you know, it'll just, it'll flash off and then, you know, it'll, it'll be right gone. But today was a little bit rough. We had um, three, four, five successive, you know, drops of the power. Um, right in the afternoon and then again uh, during the high tea. Well, you this, were there usually, this usually not happen in a Marriott but there might be some like bigger issue that's why this for, this must be happening. Yeah. Yeah. So we yeah, we're expecting that we'll we'll have the same uh, or or worse infrastructure when we go across the border, but we'll see. Oh, All right, so it is, depends. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so Mariah's back. She can hear us again. So I'm going to ask if you don't mind to just go ahead and kind of repeat your your answer to the question. You know, in what ways the U.S. can support the the Apache effort? Okay. Uh, first thing, U.S. is already supporting. Like the Cyp Washington is uh, giving a technical support to this organization. This is one of the first thing they are already doing. Secondly, as they are hired the consultants like you, ultimately we'll get some good good feedback later on once you will compare the situation of both sides Pakistan and Afghanistan and secondly uh, in future we can have a small video one sessions like we'll gather four or five people in in here in Karachi and we'll uh, are you hearing me yeah yeah and then you you can gather some people in like in your estate and we can have a video con we can then share some experiences and then, then further, we can have some like a small sessions, like a small workshop somewhere in the middle, like in Dubai or in Turkey. And and you know that's how we learn in this business. We learn from one another. And yes. so, Mariah, uh, Jay has we've already added Mirage to Frank Kenny's um, close group. So. There are all kinds of best practices shared, and, and one of the things that we've definitely learned this week, if nothing else, is that chamber work is chamber work, no matter where you are. Um, that in spite of cultural and geographical differences, the very fundamental of, of what happens in a chamber is still the same. So um, we can all share and learn from one another, regardless of where we are. So <clears throat> we'll definitely carry some of that back with us. You bet. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, I even to in, come to Dubai. Uh, sorry, I just I just want to add. Even in Pakistan, we have like different chambers, and every chamber has like not except few rules. There are some people like who who have the different practices. Like in Karachi Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Secretary General don't have that much of power. But in terms in Pakistan Joint Chamber, you already noticed that how much power files I have. In Lahore Chamber of Commerce, they are more professional. They have like proper HR system. They are they have proper IT system. So even in Pakistan, the chambers there are some differences in chambers as well. Okay. And those are like I said, there are some things that that um, Annette and I have identified that you know. Uh, again, we, we, we pretty much know, or we, we assume we know anyway, what we're going to get when we cross the border. Uh, but there are some, you know, some minor things, uh, and it's it's really system based. It's it's you know things that we can do to improve the workflow and and um, you know uh, help Mirage you know build the membership base you know a little bit more quickly, uh, you know communicate a little bit more clearly and so forth. So yeah, there are there are some some things on both sides that we'll be able to help with. Um, yes. But you know, again, you guys are doing such a wonderful job, and and truly in such a short amount of time, 
to be where you are is, uh, is, is frankly, it's remarkable. Thank you for the appreciation. You bet. Right. All right. Um, is there any thought here of combining currencies for ease of commerce like the euro? Yeah, that's not even under consideration, Mariah. <laughs> um, there are, there are, yeah, there are many, many bigger fish to fry, and that one is not going to happen anytime soon. Um, they just want to trade across the borders in an effective and, and um, efficient fashion. Thanks for coming on, Linda. Take care, right. you guys. Thanks. Bye -bye. We, we, can, we, we can use we can use the different foods in terms of the currency, <laughs> like Suji Galva of Pakistan and might be a hot dog from US. It could be a barter system instead of the currencies. There you go. We'll just we'll just switch to straight barter. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a chicken. You've got a cow. Let's trade milk for eggs. I think they've been doing that for yes. thousands of years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It makes it easy. You know? Good enough. Well, listen, guys, thanks again. We really appreciate it, and um, we will catch you tomorrow. We're going to be doing it again, same bat time, same bat channel. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Thanks.